Hi, I'm Hans, and towards the end of last year, I released a video saying or explaining why you really wouldn't want to uh, program a GPU in assembly. And in it, I talked about the single instruction multiple thread architecture that basically all modern, G uh, modern GPUs have, and how when you encounter something as simple as an if else, you can't just write code that says if this is true then just go there else go there no instead what you have to do is say okay these these threads uh, are true so disable the other ones execute the if code and then at else you have to flip the threads around so now the um the, the threads for which a less than b were true are disabled and the other ones the, the false uh, threads are enabled so that then you execute the else code and only the threads that should execute the else code will execute them. Uh, now obviously the most obvious observation would be that seems rather inefficient and then question why do it this way? Doesn't, isn't that slow? Because a normal architecture you would just jump straight to the correct code instead of having to execute both of them which sounds like it would take if if the if and else code were equally in length then it would take twice as fast so let's go through that first hint all major gpu vendors have switched to this architecture and amd and nvidia the, the two biggest they're vying competing against each other for supremacy so they're not going to choose an architecture that they have tested and they know is, is going to be slower. Basically, you can expect them to have done their homework. Well, there are a few reasons why it might not be as slow as you think. And the first one is something called spatial coherence, which is a very fancy way of saying that, let's say the GPU has one set of threads, so one wave front in, in particular um, terminology, is processing the pixels for this area on the car. And let's say your, your shader code has a switch statement for the materials. So you've got different kind of materials. Well, this area is all on the bonnet or hood of the car, if you're North American. So all of these are going to execute material solid code. So it's going to, in this case, because all of the threads are going to take the same path, you will execute this bit and skip all the rest. So you still end up, there, there are situations, a lot of situations actually, where you can end up executing the same code path and you can skip the rest anyway. All right. The next advantage is, because you can, you can have thousands of threads uh, you, every wavefront might have 32 to 64 threads, but you can have thousands in total on the, on the GPU. If every single one of them is executing a different instruction at the same time, that's a th if you've got a thousand threads, that's a thousand instructions that need to be fetched from different places in memory. That's a lot of bandwidth. Uh, and you can find that your memory bus to video RAM gets kind of clogged up. And that will, again, that when the, the GPU, if, if the GPU can't receive instructions fast enough, it just has to wait. So when you do this, say every wavefront executes the same instruction at the same time. If you've got 32 threads, that's you're slashing the bandwidth required by 32 in the, in the worst case scenario. If you've got 64 threads, it cuts it down by 64. That's a lot of bandwidth that you no longer need. Right, um, and in this situation, you can also reduce the number of L1 caches because if every thread is running its own set of instructions, then you might need to have a cache for each one of them. Whereas now you've just got one cache for a set of 32 to 64 threads. And finally, there's one other trick, which is um, they call it latency hiding. I don't think it's exclusive to GPUs. Uh, I think it, it, it's used elsewhere.
But anyway, the basic idea is, let's say the current threads are now fetching a texture, and that's going to take multiple cycles to do. If you have more wavefronts ready, so more sets of threads ready for um, adjacent, for no, not for adjacent, for different pixels, or different vertices, or whatever it is, then while this one is waiting, you can flip in another one from the ready uh, wavefronts and keep that one going. So what that does is, while every wavefront set may take a particular number of um, CPU cycles to execute, you're executing other threads in the, the sort of the periods when the, the, the other wavefront is stalled, which sort of hides some of that latency um, because you, you end up with a, a higher throughput. More, more vertices are processed, more um, pixels are processed in the same period of time, and that reduces the overall time needed to render the image to the, the screen. So that's why, yeah, that's why the architecture's SIMT architecture is used. And again, I'm, I haven't, I don't have any data to prove that this is faster, but I, I'm assuming that AMD and Nvidia have done their homework on this and they, they do have the data. Um, anyway, that, that's just, if you're curious to why would they use that when it seems to be hideously in, inefficient with branching, that's why, uh, to, to go through it quickly. You've got the adjacent pixel similarities, so you, there's a good chance that the shader will end up going through the same path for all threads in a single wavefront anyway. It reduces the instruction bandwidth um, because when you've got thousands of threads running, uh, all executing individual separate instructions, you've got a potential uh, bandwidth issue when all those instructions need to be fetched from memory or even from the caches. And finally, they have this trick called latency hiding that sort of hides some of the delays. Um, well, I guess not all the time because you need to be executing instructions that have a delay. And it's not just texture fetching, by the way. There are other instructions that might take multiple, multiple cycles to execute um, or might need to wait for some external event. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the way, that's the reason why and, and why um, it still ends up coming out ahead when you've got that many parallel threads. It's still a pain to program though. Um, anyway, that's it for now. I hope to see you next time.